All right, everybody, welcome to the Writer's Hangout. I am here with Amanda Prestigiacomo, and I can't believe I can say that correctly, <laughs> but I can. She's with yeah. the Daily Wire. Thank you very much. I practiced it lots of times. That's cool. um, and as usual, I'm your host, Megan Fox. I haven't been on this YouTube channel in a very long time, so, you know, I hope you're yeah. still subbed. <laughs> yeah, I have a I have a YouTube channel, and I have two videos on it. <laughs> I've done, I've done a great job like keeping up with my platforms and i um, very good at media. I'm doing very well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll send you the file and you can upload it to your channel too. Okay, cool. Yeah. Three videos. Three mm -hmm. videos in like three years. Good job. Good. <laughs> Once a year, guys. My subscribers. <laughs> yeah. So Amanda, you've been at the Daily Wire for how long? How long have you been writing there? I think like three and a half years. Um, yeah, it's been my only media job. And I've adored it. I love it so much. And I, I don't know what I'll do if I'm, you know, if I can't work there anymore. They're fantastic. So. Well, we got really lucky in this uh, COVID-19 shutdown Chinese virus quarantine situation because you and I both Chinese, work at home. That's racist, that's racist Megan. <laughs> I call it the, the Kung flu. I think Not my favorite is Wu flu. <laughs> Because when I first said it in front of my family, because I'm just like so entrenched in media, you know, and like I said it in front of my family and they all like started dying laughing. They thought it was so funny. I was like, yeah, heck yeah, woo flu. So that's my favorite. I also like the Szechuan shivers. Oh. <laughs> that has that has a ring to it. I think Matt Walsh came up with that one. Yeah, I like it. How has your uh, quarantine been? Uh, it's... It's not much different for me. My life is not that much different because I never leave the house. I try oh. not to leave the house. When you write, you stay home? Uh-huh. Yes. Oh, heck no. But my kids are all in school, so I get the quiet time during the day to do my writing. Now, because they're all home, that has really put a kink in my writing. And you can see on PJ Media, I'm barely writing at all. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, it's, no, it's I just, get it. I'm homeschooling three kids right now. Oh. Right. So I'm writing when I can. I'm back to writing at night, staying up way too late and sleeping in way too long. But yeah. I mean, other than that, it hasn't been much different. But I, I got to tell you, I'm I'm getting really, I'm very lucky that it didn't affect me and my family. Yeah. Because both of my husband and I are, are we we can work from home. His company is still paying everyone, and they're all working and doing their jobs from home. His yeah. business is an essential one also, so they're not going to close down. Um, so we're, we're good. But that is not the case with so many of our American family and friends. So yeah, I'm yeah. very concerned. I'm, you know, very blessed that, you know, I can just continue working. Um, but I am... <laughs> I'm actually quarantined with my parents right now, which is so funny. Uh, I'm like in between residence, like my lease kind of lap, like ended. And for my next place that I'm moving, there was like a couple months in between there. So I'm like, oh, I'll just stay with my parents. Yep. Then we got slammed with the quarantine. So very <laughs> and fun. now you're stuck together. <laughs> now I'm like, I feel like a child again, you know, because I'm like, oh, mom and dad are coming home. Like, I got to get my dad to like text me at like six o'clock. Where are you? I'm like, dad, it's Six. Like, what are you talking about? So I feel like a, a kid again, which is, you know, very interesting. And I don't have my siblings this time, you know, it's like I'm back home and it's just me and mom and dad. Like my three other siblings are not here. It's so weird. Um, but anyway, that's just like me complaining. But um, how's the how's the toilet paper situation over there? <laughs> we're good <laughs> you're good <laughs> my mom, see, like I don't I am such I am like type z like I'm not type a at all so I even for this coronavirus thing I I just do not plan I'm terrible like I do not plan for anything um Megan can probably attest to this because she's it's probably driving her nuts trying to get me to do this with her <laughs> yeah see, she knows um I have like a <laughs> planning and uh so I had I had like nothing planned my mom had all the toilet paper and all the essentials so thank god for her because I, I like ran out of toothpaste like day two um, otherwise you'd be wiping with leaves right about now yeah I'd, I'd be a total disaster so I'm like um I don't need toothpaste like you know I'm just a total moron so um but the other thing I want to say is that oh sorry I'm like talking so much I don't know why um <laughs> I'm, no, I'm with <laughs> because you've been locked up in a house with your parents <laughs> for a week and a half, two weeks. Oh. I've lost track of time. I don't even know what date it is. Oh, I don't know. I know. I don't, it's it's March still, right? Yeah. Okay. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, a couple more. Um. So anyway, yeah, I'm with my parents, and I think this is probably 
giving me a given me and i know megan you're the same too just because you you understand this but um a lot of people in media are very out of touch with like business and like small business and like the real world you know um and so my dad has been hit extremely hard by this so he's closed down um not gonna get into too much detail about my parents you know but he, he's been really hit so i i've seen it I've seen the other perspectives. We have a lot of people in media who are, you know, advocating for a full shutdown. Um, do, you know, these these doomsday prophets. I saw someone today compare this, made an analogy to like Noah's Ark. Like, good, good, good God. God, man. Good God, man. Like, pull yourself together. Pull yourself together. <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> an airplane. Like, you just want to slap them. But um, it, it's they well, there. There they is don't this see the big picture, and it's um, it, it's pretty frustrating but there is this idea though that and you're talking about these people in media who literally work out of their homes just like we do and but they make a whole lot more money than we do they work for the new york times or they work for the washington post and they sit in their you know pen penthouses in manhattan Mm -hmm. and they get paid big bucks and nothing about their life has changed at all correct and when you look around like my father's been hit really hard too He's retired all, and he, he trades, he day trades for his job, for his yeah. retirement. That's what he does. The amount of money he's lost in the last couple of weeks, I can't, it's unspeakable. Yeah. And I'm not sure. And so we're looking at, if you'll just look at your dad and my dad, that's just two people. Right. Now you multiply that by how many retirees do we have who put their savings in the market? Mm-hmm. How many? There's got to be millions and if this doesn't turn around they're going to be living their twilight years out in poverty what are these people who say it's not worth one life Hmm. one life if all if if one life is all we can save it's worth it and i'm thinking wait a minute we decide as a society every single year that the thirty-six thousand deaths or more on the highway i think it's more than that a year we decide that that's acceptable Mm-hmm. we we decide that that swimming drowning deaths are acceptable and we still swim we, there is a number that we decide is an acceptable number of deaths I not mean, that I, anyone I, wants anyone to die yeah people want to lose their minds when you bring up the flu because it's not the same as the flu but <laughs> we, we had what like eighty thousand people die from yes the, three years ago i mean it this this there there are always going to be there are always going to be deaths, right? You don't tank your economy and compound your problems to save one life. We just don't do that. And for someone to bring up that argument, they're, they're being, they're being facetious. Like they're not being honest. They're like, not they're, being honest because yeah. we don't shut down the trucking industry because people die on the highway and, mm-hmm. and they die by the tens of thousands every year. And we don't shut down our business because we have to have it to survive. And this is what I'm, I'm not hearing from many people except you Matt Walsh, Ben Shapiro, you know, a couple of us are right. starting to be like, hey, we can't do this forever. Right. Yeah. There, there seems to be no balanced approach. And any time you point this out, like, hey, guys, you know, poverty causes death as well. So does depression. Suicide. So does alcoholism. Right. Correct. And any time you bring that up, you, you want your grandparents to die. <laughs> no, like, Give me a break. Give me a break. It, it's I, I don't understand why we can't have a measured approach where places like New York, that's very hot right now, and I'm talking New York City, Amanda and I are in New York uh, far west. So right. New York City is a different animal, right? They're in the hot spot. So it makes sense for people in New York City to be extra careful and perhaps make it go a little longer, their quarantine. But when you're talking about the rest of the state, and New York is a huge state, how many sicknesses do we have in in the couple of counties around us maybe 200 and like two people died i think maybe more i don't know but it's not it's not the gigantic mess that it is in new york city on par with our flu numbers for my county it's like five people okay so why can't we can as a as a community decide okay the people who are high risk need to stay in They need to stay in and quarantine. But the rest of us who are young and healthy and are not scared of this and who will keep practicing the social distancing and all this other crap, let us get back to work so that the economy can can come back and our restaurants and our waitresses and our waiters can go back to work. I mean, listen, 
Andrew Cuomo even admitted this, right? His last couple press conferences, he's brought this up multiple times. And he said, you know, was it a mistake to go full quarantine? To have to have young people with old people, as we've seen in Italy, right? They've been in in Lombardy, which got hit the most, what ten thousand deaths. They went into full quarantine February twelfth or something. Um, we're seeing, and they have interge inter intergenerational homes, right? So Cuomo even questioned this. He said, "Was this the best strategy? Even medically speaking, was this the best strategy?" So there is no consensus that like we must all quarantine and stay in our homes. That's th there. There's debate about that as well. <laughs> you know, there's so much debate to be had. And anytime you bring a, contra for some reason, it's contrarian now, some sort of contrarian opinion, you you are a virus denier. You know, you want your grandma to die. It's it's silly. It's crazy. And, How about and driving us very 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 big problems? How about those of us who are just concerned, who are also equally concerned about losing our liberties? I mean, have we gone so far away from our founders that we don't remember? That's a savvy thing to even say, Megan. You can't even you can't even bring up your civil liberties because you want grandma to die. Bring yeah, it up. Give me liberty or give me death. That that is actually something that I think it was Alexander Hamilton who said. I think, give me liberty or give me death. What? We're here, we're now in 2020, we're like, give me totalitarianism because I don't want to die. It, it's, it's, you know, you see these cities, like, for example, you see Los Angeles where it's like full police day and they're, and they're encouraging, um, you know, they're handing, they're, they're sending out phone numbers, they're encouraging citizens to basically narc and like rat out businesses that dare to open to try to feed their families, um, you know, Mayor Garcetti said that they were quote unquote selfish. <laughs> I'm sorry, you are st you are still getting your paycheck, and you are scolding and calling these small business owners, uh, employers by the way, who help feed other people, selfish for trying to make ends meet. I'm sorry, you you pause your paycheck there, pal. Okay, and then you can exactly. Yeah. Give me a break. Well, Rush Limbaugh was back on the air yesterday for a short time, and he was talking about how where he lives, there are actual like little hall monitors running around in the streets looking for people who are violating the social distancing uh, measurements between them and trying to break it up and issuing tickets and stuff. And here's the crazy part. At the same time they're doing that, they're letting criminals out of jail and they're telling us that the police cannot arrest anyone. So you're on your own if you get robbed. I don't know if you know this because it didn't hit the news. I just happen to know it because I have an inside source. But there was a robbery, an, an armed robbery outside of Rochester, where a family was held at gunpoint and they took their supplies. And the police didn't, there was no police action. They didn't come, as far as I know. I mean, it sure didn't even hit the news. We didn't even hear about it. I did, not, I did not hear about that. I did not hear about that. I heard about it through a back channel. It happened. No. And someone I know was told, hey, lock your doors and get your ammo ready because they're not answering calls. Oh, that's comforting. <laughs> but at the same time, though, they're going to come. They're, the mayor of Chicago is banning everybody from the lakefront where there's sunshine and fresh air. And the one thing that this virus hates is sunshine and fresh air. All viruses don't survive well in fresh air and sunshine making people go inside and stay inside and not get out and get some vitamin D, this will only compound the problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm going to be very interested to see, because I, I think, I think we're seeing that the full quarantine, you know, the lockdown, I don't think that's going to prove to be the, the most effective approach, even just medically, like, obviously we have to weigh the economy and people aren't doing that, but the most effective approach I, I do, I honestly don't think is going to be, these full quarantines because you because listen we're not china we're not going to take the sick person out of the home and remove them we're just not so you have that sick person in the home or someone who you think <laughs> i don't know about that amanda i i think that's coming <laughs> so so <laughs> what i'm saying so you are infecting the rest of the household so exactly you know, is this even the best medical approach i'm gonna you know you know we'll see but i'm gonna say probably not and, and you know and you had andrew cuomo this liberal Democrat who shut down everybody for two weeks, uh, questioned that on, on live television. So, you know, this isn't just like far right people. This is like an actual thing that is allowed <laughs> to be debated, you know? Yeah, actually there was, um, there was a great video of him. Let's see if I can find it because he was on today actually talking about 
how he didn't like the sound of that at all. And I agreed with him for the first time, you know, ever. I know, I watched <laughs> but, that as well. I watched that as well. And, and I think, and you know what, and I think Cuomo was right too, because he said he didn't really know the specifics on that. And if Trump's talking about like travel restrictions, I'm all for travel restrictions. Okay, so like upstate and downstate in New York, right? If you want to like contain just in New York City, like think about like food supplies and things like that, that you can't necessarily totally cut off. Um, So there's going to be some like a a little bit of that contamination, you know, it's going to spread. So I don't even know how it would basically be enforced. So yeah, I, I was with you. I actually applauded Cuomo today, which is so weird. It makes my screen crawl, but yeah, I'm with he's, you. He's been doing that to me lately. Let's listen. Yeah. We can listen into his press conference a little bit here. Let's see. I think it was at the end because it was a question. Okay. Back on Jesse's question here. The president said he's looking to inf- he's looking at some sort of enforceable quarantine for New York, New Jersey, parts of the tri-state area. Is that a sound policy from your perspective, or would you advise against it? Yeah, I don't even know what that, what that means. I don't know how that could be legally enforceable. Uh, and from a medical point of view, I don't know what you would be accomplishing. Uh, but I can tell you, I just, I don't even like the sound of it. Not even understanding what it is, I don't like the sound of it. <laughs> yeah, me either. Sing it, preach it, brother. Me either. Yeah, I, and I think, and again, so like, for example, Florida, <laughs> I know I don't like agreeing with him. Um, me either. It makes me so confused. I am so confused. Yeah, but but I think, see, I, I have to like uh, get a full understanding of what Trump was saying because I do think some sort of travel restrictions would would sort of make sense. I think I, I don't I don't I don't even know. I mean, I think there's an argument that that it could be. Um, helpful for example in florida we had to stand to say if, you, if you're coming to florida from new york you have to self-quarantine um yeah right i think that he's looking out for his people like that that those kind of things like make sense to me like travel restrictions have always made sense to me right like tr- cutting off travel from china obviously obviously you know? and, but i still don't think we've closed the southern border and i, I don't understand why why yeah. must we still be taking immigration right now why I, d- I don't know. It doesn't make any darn sense. The Canadian yeah. border is closed, but we can't close the southern border because, I don't know, AOC will stomp our little foot and whine. I don't, I don't understand. Yeah. But yeah. okay, let's move on to this relief bill because the relief bill is really, uh, it's not good. It's not good. It's or, I mean, or what is it? I mean, what are we going to even say about it? It's to me at this point, it's monopoly money. I don't even care. Yeah. I feel like it's not even real. Yeah, it's. I mean, I was just thinking about this today, and I, I just wish. Th- I understand it's such a big issue. It's the whole nation. Okay, I understand it's. It, it would be hard to target relief. Okay, but there are people who are really, really hurting. And if we could have ch- like channeled that relief to those people who were told they couldn't work by the government and, and help them, like, for example, I did not get affected by this. I still have my, you know, I'm still getting my checks. I'm still working. What, like, I, I wish I didn't get that money and it was channeled to the people who were really hurt because it's really devastating some people. And I understand it's such a big issue. It's, it's you know, it's going to be a bureaucratic nightmare to, you know, just channel it to the people who are severely affected because they need it. Um, but, but there, for example, just think of everybody who works for the government who's still getting their money. They get this relief check on top of it and it would just, and that's a huge, huge, huge portion of people. And if that could have been directed to like small businesses or, you know, low income, you know, like waitresses who now have no, nothing, um, hair, people work at hair salons, like, I know it's such a big issue and I don't even know if it was doable, but I just wish it could be more targeted relief because it's. I agree with you. I mean, it's, I don't really know how you would do it though in a different way. Although I would say this, I don't, here's what I don't like. I don't like, I wouldn't care if everybody got a check. I wouldn't care at all. Um, If small businesses were actually taken care of, and I'm talking about the small (laughs) businesses that had to shut down and cannot 
get, I mean, you don't, I don't think people understand that some small businesses can't go a week without being open. Exactly. So this, we're on number week two and a half, are we? Mm-hmm. We're, we're going on to week three. I guarantee you there are going to be businesses who cannot come back from this. And so here's what they're being offered. And I just love this. This is, this is so sick. The government has driven a truck through your business. They have driven a semi through it. They have destroyed it. It's all their fault. And what they are saying to you is, as the business owner, don't worry about it. I'm not going to pay for it. You're going to take out a loan and I'm going to be so gracious that I'm going to give you 0% on that loan. So you have to go into debt to fix the wreck that I made out of your business. That's what they're being told. Uh, I think it's a low interest loan. I don't think it's 0%, Megan. Well, according to Wham 1180, which was uh, on the Bob Lonsbury show the other day, the news person said that in maybe it's a, a New York state thing because- it could have got, listen, it could have got a lot changed. I don't know. But I, even I, if it is, even if okay. it is zero or not, what if it's not zero? If it's right. zero, that's right. still yeah. terrible. Exactly. exactly. They're still telling you, you have to go into debt to fix the wreck I made. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. not okay with me. Only, so it, there's like a portion of that that could be forgiven, but it can only be forgiven a portion of the loan that you pay for your mortgage and utilities and your payroll is if you keep your payroll, so you have to hire back and you have to keep your payroll until June 30th. Oh, God. And but then you get how much of it back? How, how much is forgiven? That's for those expenses, mortgage, utilities, and payroll. But, but how are these companies supposed to hire everybody back and keep up with on payroll? So for example, in New York, when your business is shut down, okay, let's say you have a restaurant. You're not allowed to be open, or if you do, it's substantially cut because you can only do takeout, okay? So you had to let people go, can't keep them on. Now, with that $600 boost that they put into the unemployment, you're going to make unemployment, then you're going to get the $600 boost until I think it's like August or July. So you could be making probably in like a restaurant or something, probably making more on the unemployment plus the boost than you would by coming back on and having them pay you. So you put a real damper on the employer because now he can't hire those people back. He can't keep them on payroll because why are they going to? They're making more money otherwise. They'll just wait it out until July, whatever. Um, and, be- and because they can't do that, they get zero relief because nothing's forgiven in that loan because they couldn't keep their payroll. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's totally. It, I wonder, well, hopefully there there'll be so many, pool. not hopefully, but yeah. I mean, there will be so many people out of work that hopefully the pool will be bigger to choose from to hire people if the ones who were previously working couldn't come back or didn't come back for whatever reason. So I guess it's good that some of it can be forgiven. I guess that's something, but I don't like the way it's being done. I don't like the way that's being, I don't like the way that's been rolled out. Like, oh, we, we created this big, huge mess, but go ahead and go into debt so that you can pull your way out of it. And maybe we'll give you some back if you meet these requirements. What? Right. Right. I know. I think they should get grants. You can't, you can't close somebody down. You can't say, Hey, you're not allowed to work. Um, you know, you have to pause for weeks on and still, still somehow, you know, figure out all your bills because again, like in New York, it's like, okay, you're, you can postpone your residential stuff, but it's a nightmare trying to get your, you know, your business, that mortgage delayed. So it's, you know, a ton of work, a ton of time, a ton of hours trying to get those payments delayed. You're still going to pay all this stuff, um, with like no income, basically, it, it, it's it's unbelievable. And then, and then they're not going to help you. They're not going to give you a grant. They're going to oh, here's a loan. Be indebted. And then at the same time, we had to watch our elected officials, who I really have not that I had a lot of respect for them before because I really didn't. <laughs> but what whatever was left, whatever small sliver of respect that I had left for these people has been shattered into a thousand pieces and scattered to the wind. Yeah. After watching them shove their pork into it like a fat girl getting into her Spanx. I mean, <laughs> it was it was incredible watching that. And when I say a fat girl getting into her Spanx, I, I mean me. Um, <laughs> I feel like you're talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, all of us over 40. You know, you're not over 40 yet, so you, you're, you're not included. And you don't have kids yet, so you don't have all the extra jiggly bits that that those of us who do have it's really quite sad and that and we're going to single-handedly us mothers over 40 keep spanks in business for sure they will not go under 
during this time <laughs> because those are garments that we cannot live without. I'll tell you what. But um, I, I just, I watch them do this and I, I feel sick. I feel physically sick watching them take advantage of this crisis where people are terrified, their lives are on the line, their businesses are sick, their family members are sick. And they take that opportunity to shove in their pet projects and $25 million for the Kennedy Center of Performing Arts because Chuck Schumer wants to give money to Valerie Jarrett, who sits on the board. Um, so she's getting her payoff. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what other crap was in it. I, I lost interest. I don't even want to look. I don't even want to look. Yeah. Yeah. Abortion is. funding. I mean, really, do these people have no sense of the gravity of the situation? Yeah, that was that was pretty unbelievable how Nancy Pelosi just kind of, oh, we're going to do basically try to enforce the new the new deal in here. Uh, it's, it's pretty it's pretty galling that they would do that at I was actually time. pretty amazed she didn't get her way that they had to take it all out um, yeah. except for the Kennedy Center thing which was truly yeah. stupidity but tell me what is your opinion on this uh, Representative Massey um, debate that's going on with the president going after him for wanting to hold up the bill I don't I, I like Massey and I'm not going to pile on him. Um, I think, you know, it's come to the point where Trump basically has no choice, and you, you got to get, you got to sign something. You know, it's been such a delay. There's been such shenanigans. Pelosi tried to pull all that with her with her Green New Deal nonsense, trying to pull that in. It's it's you need to get the you need to give relief, even though it's, I don't think it's sufficient. Uh, you need to do something now. You know, and I think Trump was just, I got to sign this yesterday, you know, so. Of I, course, he did that to us with the budget bill, too. He, right. he does the same thing. Well, I had to. I have to because they won't let me do it any other way. And while I, I understand, sometimes someone has to stand up and say no. Yeah. No. We, we don't yeah, want I'm this like this. I'm not going to pile on Massey at all. Absolutely not. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't think he did the wrong thing. I just think you're right about why the president did that. I think you're right about that. Yeah. It's, it's just a, it's such a crying shame. Um, I can't, I don't know. I don't know what to think because honestly, I think all the smart people, instead of telling us all these things that we're going to do to fix it, I think every smart person in the whole damn world right now should say, you know what? We have no idea what to do. <laughs> because if you say anything else, you're lying. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think the next step, so just like if we just want to look forward here, I think the next step is just because as I think we've seen that a lot, it, it looks like, and we'll see for sure, but it looks like a lot of people have either have it or have had it and didn't know. And Cuomo said this again today that they're working on these like antibody tests, which I think would be yep, blood. Yep. I totally um, want to take that. I'm sure I had it in December. Yeah. Exactly. So you would basically you would probably be immune if you had had it, and and, mm -hmm. um, and that would help open up the economy because we need to look at ways to start opening up the economy again asap. Like that, that's what we need to do. So that is the next step forward. You know, getting people tested, then then looking at these antibody tests and getting those out as soon as possible, so we can start opening up our economy and not just compound our problems by having you know a depression on top of you know, a virus, another virus, you know, because at, at the least, because of course there's a resource issue here. You know, the, I've said this from the beginning. I've always cautioned against shutting down the economy, but I've always said, of course, at the very least, you're looking at double flu numbers because you have the flu and you have this. Okay. And I'm talking about admissions. I'm not saying it's the same thing. I know it's not the same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it can overwhelm the healthcare system. Yes. That's why I need coordination with the governors and, and, um, and the president and even, you know, officials within the states with the governors. Okay. That's absolutely, absolutely. That because we don't want to overwhelm our system. And then, you know, not that we will ever look anything like Italy, but have issues like that. Um, so continue to do that. Look at PPE, make sure we have the ventilators. Trump has to do whatever he has just to make sure we have them. I don't think we're going to need 30,000 in, in New York. But, <laughs> but, no, I don't but think we're going to need that either. I do not think so. But I understand that aspect, right? Being fully prepared. I'm, I'm totally on board with that. Um, and then, and then testing, testing, testing. 
and then we and then we can quickly we got to get this economy moving now you know i agree all right so i wrote this today i'm going to pull it up on the screen so you can see it um but what's bothering me the most about this whole thing is the fake news there was so much of it and Governor Cuomo became a victim of the fake news recently, and I think he figured it out. <laughs> and I wrote this article about him in basically admitting that Trump's right. There are no shortages, and the shortage reports you're seeing are fake news. Yeah. I have been saying this from the beginning of this. Donald Trump put this out today. He said, so much of the lamestream media is writing and broadcasting stories with facts that are made up and knowingly wrong. They are doing it by quoting unnamed sources that simply do not exist. These are very dangerous and corrupt people who will do anything to win. Name your sources. I've been saying this from the beginning. Now, look at this. Lisa Ling, she tweets out, our hospitals are hugely overwhelmed. There is this invisible and silent killer amongst us, and we need to address it now. And it's not just her. The Wall Street Journal put out a, a headline, hospital capacity cross tipping point in U.S. coronavirus hotspots. But guess what? Inside the article, here's what the doctor said. We're not completely drowning, although it feels like it sometimes. We're on the threshold of being overwhelmed, which means they're not overwhelmed yet. Um, then we have 13 deaths in a day, an apocalyptic coronavirus surge at, the, at New York City Hospital. This article in the New York Times came with this viral video of this woman who claims to be a doctor, right? And look, I'm just going to kind of fast forward through here. She's walking through, she's violating HIPAA all over the place, walking through this uh, so-called hospital. She says it's Elmhurst Hospital. And she's complaining about ventilators. Look at this. They got their third emergency resupply in a week. And she's standing in front of these five unused or four unused ventilators. Actually, I think there's five. There's one off the screen. Standing in front of them saying, we are desperately in need of ventilators. We have no ventilators. Now, the, she's standing in front of five unused ven ventilators while she's saying this. And do you think if people were dying in the hospital right now, in this Elmhurst hospital, like they claim that they're dying because they don't have ventilators, wouldn't doctors be snatching these thing up, things up right now and running them to the dying patients? Yeah, Would they I mean, be sitting in a hallway? Yeah. Now well, look, at, look at this, look at this, it gets worse. It gets worse. Here's the numbers as of New York yesterday. There were, uh, today actually, Saturday, 6,481 people hospitalized. Of those, 1,500 and some were in intensive care. In the whole state, if every person in intensive care were on a ventilator, the state still has thousands more. Mm -hmm. He says his estimated current stock is 6,000 units. So who are these doctors who are lying to us and saying that they're short on ventilators? Mm -hmm. This is really making me mad because mm -hmm. they're not short. And he even goes on and he says in this conference that uh, they're also they're saying that he doesn't have the PPE for the uh, nurses. And nurses are putting out um, pictures of themselves in trash bags. Well, the director of the New York City Hospital says, look underneath them. They're wearing the appropriate gear underneath it. And there is no shortage. I don't know why they did this. But there is no shortage. Here's what Cuomo had to say about protective gear. We've called the individual hospitals. Uh, there's no doubt that in the past few days, you know, the, there's maybe the distribution is a little start and stop. Uh, but we have enough PPE, and the New York City officials say they have enough PPE for the New York City hospitals. So then he goes on to ask the rest of his panel, is that right? You've talked to these hospitals. And she says, oh, yes. And if they needed it, they know that they could call us and we would make sure they got it. So there is a concerted effort out there to make you believe that everything is going to hell and everything is falling apart. And it's just not true. It's just not true at all. Yeah, almost today that, because Trump said they have a stockpile of ventilators because Cuomo keeps talking about ventilators and he was asked point blank do you have ventilators in this in a stockpile as Trump said and he said no that's grossly out of his character and then the next <laughs> out of his mouth was we have ventilators in our stockpile that we haven't yet to distribute because they don't need them yet yeah 
yeah, of course. Yeah. That's kind of the whole point. Like, yeah. I think what he was, what, what he was also trying to, the reason why he said it was grossly inaccurate is because, and he should be blaming he the media. Forward. He should yeah. be blaming them for being grossly inaccurate because they're the right. ones leading the president to believe that the state of New York is so short on ventilators that he is now thinking, well, why isn't that idiot distributing the ventilators that I sent him? Yeah. Do you see? And so, of course, now the two of them, the media pits the two of them to get uh, against each other. But I read in another article that they patched it up over the phone. Apparently, they talk three and four times a day now. And, you know, they worked it out. And Cuomo then told the press he feels very confident he's going to get the ventilators that he needs. Right. So why is the press hyperventilating? I don't know. I don't. I think it's weird. Yeah. Yeah, well, clearly the ventilator thing was... Uh, at least an, an exaggeration or she, she misconstrued what she was trying to say. I don't, I don't know, but well, I clearly almost feel they're, like they're trying to get, I feel like they're trying to create a sense of urgency because they're worried that they're going to run out. Yeah. But if, if there's only 1500 people in the ICU, so I'm assuming that not even all of them are on ventilators, but even if all of them were, we're still in really good shape. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I and I think the panic will contribute to like flooding these these hospitals um, because people are are so scared about the coronavirus, right? Like they're they're just like go even though if you have these symptoms, you know, as Pence was saying, you don't necessarily go right away because you're going to contaminate everybody. You call you call your physician. You take you know what they what you listen to them, um, but we're just flooding these places and you know that can't be good for the spread or for our healthcare systems in the first place you know so we're just kind of we're just the media are helping to add on to our problems um shutdown of the economy is helping to add on to our problems i don't think we're we're doing things to help the issues that we have as of now i think it's turning around but um the media will always will always be terrible that will never change <laughs> want to see the worst the worst media report that i've uh that i saw in the last couple days you want to see the worst one yeah. you're gonna laugh um let's see let me open it up this has got to be and i i archived it it was so bad these are the worst two the worst two articles that you'll ever see i don't think we could ever see anything worse than this in uh future days i i really don't here we go <laughs> new york post Sales of fish tank additives skyrocket after studies say it could treat coronavirus. Did you see this? Oh my gosh. This is the Post? I thought this is the New York Post. I archived it just in case they took it down because guess what? Five days after they published this, some guy takes some of this stuff and dies. Man dies after self-medicating with chloroquine. Well, it's Trump's fault, obviously. And it's Trump's fault. And they all went with the headline that the drug that Trump touted is killing people. Well, no. Fish tank additive. And then in here, they tell you inside the article that, yeah, it's not really the same thing as the yeah. medicine. Yeah. However, you can go get it on eBay. Look, <laughs> it says sellers on eBay are selling it for uh, from $9.99 to over $500 for 25 grams. How irresponsible is this? I'm just shocked by that. I'm shocked yeah. by it. I don't think we'll ever see another, I don't think we'll ever see press as bad as that. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty bad. It's pretty That's, bad. And it went super viral too. You know, you had like all these legacy media folk pushing this and blaming the president. And I don't know, it's like we have enough distrust in media that you know, it's, it's totally eroded and it's, as it should be. Um, and, and actually I hope for the sake of the country that it is totally eroded the trust in media because you read stuff like that and it's grossly irresponsible. And it's again, just adding to our problems. And, and it's actually da that something like that is actually very dangerous. dangerous. And then they yeah. have the nerve to turn around and say the heat. That, that headline, it's, pretty, it's pretty, I didn't see that Megan. Cause I've seen the different headlines, but that where it says the fish cleaner, it, sh it said, yeah. you know, that that is a cure for coronavirus my goodness i know i yeah. know 
I mean, I, I couldn't believe it when I saw it. And everybody that I know was kind of like, oh, give the New York Post a, a post a pass. They're usually pretty pro-Trump. You know what? No, that was one of the worst fake news articles I've ever seen in my whole life. And it could have led to that man's death. That's what really we should be looking at <laughs> to see where he got the idea. It certainly didn't, the president certainly didn't get up and say, buy fish tank aquariums, uh, algicide. Mm -hmm. He didn't say that. That's garbage. He said, you know, he was talking about the actual prescription medication that you cannot buy on eBay. You can't buy it on eBay, people. If you think you can buy it on eBay, you're getting poisoned. <laughs> yeah, it's a good rule of thumb. Yeah, it's a good rule of thumb. Like if you're buying meds on eBay, they're not meds. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so I think we're probably at around like the 30 minute mark. I forgot to start timing us. So I don't know. However, I think we should end on a, um, a fun note. And <laughs> have you seen what David Geffen has been tweeting? Have you seen that yet? Because this, yeah. this is pretty fun. Um, David Geffen, who is a bazillionaire, decided it would be a good idea to take to Twitter. And he's one of Obama's guys, by the way. He decided it would be a great idea to take to Twitter and give us all a lovely shot of his, ex his exclusive elite yacht. I think he took this picture from a drone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So these people, these people understand that we have to keep the economy going, right? They're they're totally on our level. They're just like a, a like a barkeep or like a like a you know a waitress. Same thing. Totally on our level. Same, same they don't thing. care about us. Yeah. He's um, checking in. He's checking in on us, Amanda. He wants to know that we're doing okay in our quarantine because he's isolated in the Grenadines, avoiding yeah. the virus on his bazillion dollar yacht. I'm not like a class warfare kind of gal, but this will, uh, <laughs> this, I don't know. You see something like this and you're like, oh, good gosh. Like, yeah, it'll make you hate elites for sure. That you know, is, I don't, yeah, I don't begrudge you your yacht, David Geffen. I really don't. Yeah. But if you have one and you're isolated on in the Grenadine Islands, just like shut up and don't tell us about yeah. it, okay? Because the rest of us are <laughs> where... The rest it's like, of us. what do you want to bet that he's one of these guys who's like, we must shut down. We must shut down for months. Otherwise, we're all going to die. You know what I mean? They yes. No touch yeah, of course. Of this course. is exactly the type of guy who is saying we must shut down the economy for two months at least. And we all have to vote by mail so that Democrats can change all the votes. <laughs> yeah. I thought we were going to end on... Um... Biden getting me too and everybody closing their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot I about that. The belief women. Aw. I forgot yeah. about that. You know, I have Biden standards that we have to believe her. Let's see. Joe Biden accuser. Let's let's look her up. Shall let's, we? Let's see how much of the media. Oh, hot air Washington Examiner Newsweek. Yeah. Where is uh, the New York Times here? I don't know. What do we have here? Yeah, we have Examiner Newsweek. Um, so, oh, look, believe all women's standard goes out the window with Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I've written a book about this, so I have not looked at her case. Yeah. Um, and so I'm not sure what kind of evidence she's put forward. I don't, have you read about it? I, li okay, this is going to sound really mean. I'm probably getting in trouble for this. I tried to listen to her. Um, I'm just going to stop. I'm just going to. It, it just wasn't. Well, that's okay. Uh, if you had yeah. a hard time. Listen, I couldn't listen to Christine Blasey Ford. That woman <laughs> was like nails on a chalkboard. Yeah, it was, it was pretty brutal. I, I, have to, I have to go back and listen to it. But here's the thing, though. When there are these really, really old, old accusations coming up, it, listen, though, post Me Too, because Me Too, everybody came out. Everybody came out. There was nothing stopping you, right? You're empowered. You share your story. And even then, it wasn't shared. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that's a good I mean, point. Joe's, Joe's creepy. Here she don't is. Get me Here's, wrong. Here she is. Okay, yeah. so I don't. So know. I, I would have to look into it before I make a decision. Uh, before I, before I, um, not make a decision. I'm sorry. Before I totally understand what. Well, her see, again, it's 30 years ago. She right. says she was a. Close this. I hate these pop-ups. I swear. I I um, 30 years ago, while working as a Senate staffer for Biden in '93. This then senator would do things like put his hand on her shoulder or run his finger up and down her neck. Well, yeah, he does that on camera to everyone. Yeah, of course, of course, yeah. Is that it? Oh, no, no, no. 
Oh, that's not it. Okay. I'm like, wait a minute. We've seen him do that on camera. So guilty. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So what, what is she claiming rape? Go go back. No, a sexual assault, but that encompasses a lot of things. So go back, go back, go back. The cat before that, a little bit before that. Yeah. Now, however, Reed says that during this time period. Yeah. Biden sexually uh, assaulted her, pushing her against a wall and beating her. Yeah, okay. I don't believe that. I'm sorry. I, I don't. Look, when, here's the thing. When something happens 30 years ago, you got to yeah. come forward right away because otherwise you're not getting any justice because there's no evidence. And we don't convict men on no evidence. We don't do that. They're not, they're innocent unless proven guilty. And and listen, I understand it was different times and, and there can be there, you know, it doesn't mean that it's not true just because time has lapsed. But I'm saying, um, especially after me too, you know, everybody was coming forward and people were empowered to come forward and take these people down. I mean, Hollywood was rife with predators. Um, and, and, you know, politicians, I mean, yeah, nobody was safe. It It wasn't, it was happening on both sides of the aisle. Exactly. Exactly. And it just seems like, I don't understand. She just came out now. She didn't come out during the me too stuff. Yeah, that's, it is suspect. And also, I mean, look, you're right. It doesn't mean it didn't happen, but right. it also doesn't mean it did happen. We can't, right. we right. can't know. We yes. cannot know. Right. 30 years ago, we just cannot know. Right. So unless Which she is, has some kind really, of- It's kind of, I mean, that's actually like very sad, right? Because this could have yeah. not happened. And now this is, you know, I'm not a fan of Joe Biden, but that's, that's it, you know, there's an accusation and that can, that can- blacken someone's record even though well he doesn't have to worry about it the media is completely <laughs> ignoring it <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> they are completely ignoring it they don't give a crap about this woman this, this woman is not to be believed they yep. believe all women except this woman so right. no yeah. worries right <laughs> <laughs> you can put that one back in the closet because it's never gonna it's never gonna bite him yeah Oh, okay. What are your quarantine plans this week? Oh gosh. Well, day, what day are we on? Like day 15, same as day 14. Yeah. <laughs> you know, basically my days go like this, uh, sleep in too late, wake up the kids and yell at them for sleeping in too late, make, <laughs> make them get up and do some homework, which, you know, I, I don't know if it's getting done. I just found out today that my eighth grader didn't do eight of her 10 assignments this week. So she was grounded until she finished them today. She told me that she was doing it all. You know, I I guess it just didn't go that way. So, and then I'm going to, and then I cook sort of, or I try to work, which I'm getting more work done on the weekends now. So now I'm neglecting all my household chores because I can't do them. And I can't, I, I don't even know how to work like this, Amanda. I'm not used to it. Mm-hmm. so I'm just a mess how about your quarantine plans anything yeah, no I'm just trying to I'm trying to just like snap out of the funk because it's very easy to um I don't know I feel like I've been making excuses a little bit and like everything's so crazy and I so I like won't work out or I won't eat right it's just silly things like that which is like very trivial um but I'm trying to like get back on top of it you know just it is exhausting. Get up though, early. Isn't it? Get up, yeah, and like not be bogged down by this. Like get up early. You know, continue to what I think is push out information. That's important. Um, and you know that's it. And and it's just I know people are really stressed, and I have it super easy. Um, and I just hope people feel I don't know feel some sort of relief and. Um, you know, try to, try to push through this. I just, uh, this is, this is one thing I'll say. The American people are so good. I mean, I've had a lot of issues with how we've handled this, um, but I will say it's undeniable that we just have some incredible people. I mean, there are a lot of hospitals and and healthcare systems that are getting, you know, they are getting swamped and they are getting more, more intake and people are coming there if they have it or not. And, you know, these, these nurses and doctors are super brave. Um, people who are working at the grocery stores are fantastic. Yeah. How about those people? Boy, yeah. they are really, yeah. they are really facing a whole lot of angry people too. When you, when absolutely. You, when they have to go, when they Scared see that there's people. food shortages, people get nuts. Yeah. I think there've been a lot of people who've just really stepped up. 
we've seen a lot of people donate um you know we have a little local grocery store here in my tiny little town and they are taking phone orders so that they can get yeah. everything everybody needs Absolutely. you know so they can order it and have it ready for them yeah. and it's such a cute little place because everybody in this town really helps each other they all know each other it's only like a thousand people and so they're all helping one another, which is real sweet. And it's on the Facebook page. You know, they're like, well, there's toilet paper going to be delivered on Monday. Everybody can come down and get one package. You know, <laughs> it's, yeah, that's, and that's the way it should be. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we do see more of that. And there are like, you know, people are taking care of their families, like getting groceries for their grandparents, um, you know, making sure they're delivered, obviously not getting in, in close contact with them, but you know, doing those sorts of things. They're just, they're just a lot of really good people um, who have just really stepped up. So that's really heartening. And of course, I've always known that, but it's just, it's just beautiful to see. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think that's all we have time for this evening. Yeah. Yeah. So this was fun. I don't know if we're going to do this all the time or, uh, or once in a while, but it was a good time. Thank you, Amanda Presta Giacomo for being yeah. here. This was cool. Yeah. Maybe next time we can do, I was kind of nervous. I'm like, I don't know if I don't want to live stream. I'm kind of nervous. What if I think <laughs> it's going to get me blacklisted? Um, but yeah, maybe we can like do an actual live stream with like questions or something. That'll be fun. If I can ever figure out how to make the damn software work, <laughs> yeah. we will. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. All right. Take care, everybody.